For today's video, I'm giving away a free copy of Persona Studio One Artist which came free with the revolution, but since I already use Studio One Artist, I'm going to give it away to one lucky person. Simply give this video a thumbs up and comment why you'd love to win, and I'll pick a winner once this video gets 5,000 views. Today we're taking a look at the $399 Black Lion Audio Revolution 2x2 and the Antelope Audio Zengo Synergy Core Audio Interfaces. We'll talk specs, do latency testing, vocal testing, and see how they compare. The point of this video is not to see which one is better, but to compare the differences and similarities and see which one may be better for you. So let's not waste any more time and roll that intro. What's up YouTube Universe, this is Jacob Dark, and if you're new here, I'm somebody who's always trying to get my hands on the latest tech to test, review, and give my opinion to help everyday people just like me make that final purchase decision. If you find this video helpful, I'd super appreciate it if you use the links in the description of this video, which will help support this channel by helping me earn a small commission. Now let's not waste any more time and get things going. Let's start with the Revolution. This is a tank of a box with excellent build quality, nothing about this unit feels cheap. Every knob is weighted, feels solid, and is easy to grip and is super responsive when controlling the game. The LED meters are some of the best I've seen and are super bright and vivid and measure both your input and output volume levels. This is one of the most solid boxes I've tested as far as build goes, but where this unit shines is on the inside. With noise-reducing PGI technology and fully decoupled ins and outs, you can rest assured Black Lion went the extra mile to use only the best parts when putting this thing together. My only gripe is I wish the mic pre-connections were on the back of the unit so I'd have less cables on my desk. That brings us to the Zen Go, which has a much more desktop-friendly design. With its angled front and controls on the top of the unit, you'll have no problem in lower light environments and placing the unit wherever you'd like on your desk. It's built with a smaller, lighter footprint and an all-metal body, perfect for those on the, huh, go. That's why they named it that. While the LED meter isn't as vivid as the Revolution, you'll have no issue reading its display, which shows your input, SPDIF, and output volumes. Connections and buttons are solid, the big knob has a nice click to it, and I think most users will appreciate its simplified design. There's not too much to talk about here as both interfaces are almost the same. Both units are USB-C powered, both have two mic pre-line inputs, and both units have a set of SPDIF ins and outs. Both have a set of TRS monitor outs, however the Zen Go has an additional set of mirrored RCA outs, and the Zen Go has two headphone outputs while the Revolution has one. This is where it starts to get interesting. The question is, are you a musician or an engineer? If an engineer, you want the cleanest possible signal, and that's where the Zen Go shines. These are super clinical, transparent pre's. What you put in is what you get out. They yield an impressive 65 dB gain range, which means you have more than enough gain to supply dynamic mics like the SM7B. While the Revolution only has 55 dB gain range, it has some of the most impressive stock pre's I've heard. While measurement tests have shown it to have more noise floor than other interfaces, the sound you get out of this box is something only the ears can hear. It adds a hint of color or mojo to vocals, and you'll end up with a much more musical, pleasing result, which is why I'd recommend it for musicians. There's been a lot of talk about the Revolution's noise floor making the unit unusable, and this couldn't be further from the truth. Now sure, if you're going to take an SM7B, a microphone that demands a crazy amount of gain, and pair it with an interface that doesn't have enough gain to power this microphone, and then you're going to crank it all the way up to max gain and hit record, then you're going to get a lot of noise, but that would be the case with any interface. 
ask actual musicians who already own the revolution that are using it for actual music and i guarantee you're going to get nine out of ten times nothing but positive reviews numbers don't equal everything they're not the final word the final judgment use your ears because yes they matter and i promise you will love this unit I'll be using a Warm Audio WA87R2 for these tests. So I was looking into flying to Philly this year to attend my first ever Eagles game, something that's been on my bucket list for some time now, and wow, tickets $1,000, airfare $500, hotel $400, and spending money $500. Yeah, I think I'm going to wait until they're a playoff contender again before I take that trip. So I was looking into flying to Philly this year to attend my first ever Eagles game, something that's been on my bucket list for some time now, and wow, tickets $1,000, airfare $500, hotel $400, and spending money $500. Yeah, I think I'm going to wait until the Eagles are a playoff contender again before I take that trip. In today's world, most interfaces are pretty solid when it comes to converters, but for the record, the Revolution has macro MMC clocking technology with 106 dB dynamic range, while the Zengo has 64-bit acoustically focused technology with 127 dB dynamic range. While the Zengo has a noticeable difference on paper, again, your ears will come into play. Much like the preamps, it's personal preference. If you're looking for a clean, clinical, true-to-the-source sound, go with the Zen Go. If you want a little bit of character that can really let you feel the music and will actually make your monitors sound better, go with the Revolution. Either way, you can't lose, and if at the end of the day your mixes suck, I promise it's not the interface. As always, let's see how they compare with latency. With the Revolution, you're going to get a huge bonus if you're just starting out as you get Persona Studio One Artist included. An entire DAW free with your purchase is kind of a big deal. Not only that, but you get mixing and mastering software from Isotope, which is a nice bonus. On the other hand, with the Zen Go, you're getting Synergy Core DSP. It has one DSP chip to be exact, which gives you the power to apply effects in real time as you record so that you don't have to fully mix it later. Now, some may prefer to mix it in post, but if you're a streamer, gamer, or doing a podcast, having your sound EQ'd as you're recording live is a super valuable feature. It's actually pretty convenient for content creators as well, since we can have the sound already dialed in so we don't have to add more effects to Premiere. Okay, so I've taken a little bit of time here to set my gain just right so that I can show you guys how to use the real-time effects. It's as simple as coming to the AFX section here and going to add new effect and selecting out of what you have available. 
I'm going to do the VEQ1A just to kind of show you and let's move those dials in real time here just to show you the differences that it can make. Of course, you'll want to spend some time and dial it in just right depending on the effects that you're going for. Uh, let me just take this moment to let you know that the Zengo also has loopback, which is a great feature, as I said, for you gamers, streamers, podcasters, and content creators just like myself. So again, just a quick demonstration. So which would I recommend? It really depends on you. I've been saying it all along. If you're an artist who's just starting out and you don't have any gear yet, I think the Revolution would be a fantastic interface. It's going to add a little bit of character and help you vibe with the music when you're listening and writing and creating those masterpieces. The fact that you get Studio One Artist free just means less expense out of your pocket. If your plan is to focus on mixes and be the best engineer you can be, I think the Zengo is a great choice for getting that clean, clinical, accurate sound. And with that complement of effects that you can add real time, it's going to be great for you guys out there who are trying to learn to mix and master. At the end of the day, you can't go wrong with either interface, and I think they'll both be solid and make you happy depending on what you're looking for. That's going to do it for today. So as always, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be alerted each time I upload more content. So until next time, thank you for watching, stay tuned, and have a great day.